Good day. This recording is for March 17, 2022, uh, Bible study by CPAC Women's Ministries Department, which was supposed to be uh, on that night, but because of blackout, it was uh, postponed. So I opted to do this recording. And this is about embracing life's lessons from Dina. So I would like to share my screen with you. I hope that you will be blessed with our discussion regarding this. So we have this text based on Genesis 34, 1, which says, she went out to see the daughters of the land. So this is uh, the basis of our study in this um, verse. So before we start, shall we have prayer first? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for having us this chance to learn about the life of Dinah and to understand your will, Lord, for us as we are going to learn some important lessons about her life. Thank you also for using her in spite of her flaws, in spite of her weaknesses, but still you have given her the chance to be part of those um, Bible characters that we have learned this I pray in Christ's name. Amen. So who is Dinah? So our study is based on, I have mentioned, Genesis chapter 34, although Dinah was mentioned also in other verses. So let's see who is Dinah. So these are the two verses that mention about Dinah. We can find it in Genesis chapter 30, verse 21. I'm going to read it and let's see what it says so chapter 30 verse 21 it says then leah conceived again and gave birth to a daughter and called her dinah which means justice so dinah actually is the uh, only daughter of leah so her the, her name also implies justice which later on there's really an implication about that. In Genesis chapter 34, verses 1 to 31, this is the lengthy discussion that we are going to have on Genesis chapter 34. So to recap, Dinah is a daughter of Leah. So the only daughter of Jacob mentioned in the Bible. We have not read any daughters or daughter of Jacob being mentioned. It's only Dinah. And Dinah is beautiful, young, and adventurous. So we can, also, we can only imagine that Dinah really is beautiful because, you know, even if her mother is Leah, we know between the two, between the two wives of uh, Jacob, uh, Leah and Rachel, Leah is less beautiful than Rachel. But of course, Leah and Rachel are sisters. Maybe uh, Dinah have... Um, Inherited her beauty from, from her auntie Rachel or maybe from her grandmother, uh, grandmother Rebecca. You know? So from Jacob, uh, from Isaac rather. So maybe those beautiful faces that they have inherited from their even great great grandmother Sarah may be uh, wear on Dinah. So we can imagine that she is beautiful, young, and adventurous. So what happened to Dinah? If you read uh, chapter 34 of, the, of Genesis, you will see there a terrible thing happened, which, of course, it started out in just our Bible, our key text this, uh, in this study, which says that Dinah went out to Make friends with the girls in Shechem, the city of Shechem. So the city of Shechem is perhaps uh, just near from where Jacob settled, because we know they are. We have traveled no from different places, uh, and they went back to Canaan after Esau and Jacob made some uh, peace between them. Then after that, they have settled in Canaan. So one of the places that they have settled is near city of Shechem. And if you read here, 
Daina was uh, w- was with her friends, and they visited the place. Perhaps they have they have come to some activity. Perhaps in that city. Perhaps the city was. We can just imagine, uh, like maybe if it is now, there is uh, there are so many beautiful places to visit. Uh, like we are in, like when we are in the city, there are so many malls, the same many disco bars, and those things, theaters to see. So Dinah went there, and what happened? The crown prince of the city saw her, which also named Shikim. That's the reason why the city was named Shikim because the crown prince is also Shikim. It was named after him. And when he saw Daina, Oh, you know the other, you know the the succeeding story. Of course, she she forcefully um, took Daina, you know, from her from her parents, and for forceful, uh, you know, at one term, Carlos, we call that rape. He raped Daina, so out of the consent of Daina, she lost her virginity, and then with that. Although she, she, uh, he has taken Dinah already, but he fell in love with Dinah and he wanted to marry Dinah. And he asked the, the help of his father. She came asked the help of Hamor, his father, so that he can uh, ask uh, the hand of Dinah for marriage. So Hamor and she came, went to Jacob and asked for Dinah. And, and Daina was left behind in the house of Shikim. And when Jacob heard about what happened to her daughter, of course, as a father, you are also heartbroken. Your only daughter, your only beloved daughter, were raped by a person. So Jacob could not, even if, even if the father and the man who raped, his daughter would ask the hand of her daughter for marriage. But, uh, you know, it's really hurtful on the part of the father. So Jacob decided to wait for his other children who were in the field. And when they arrived home, they learned about the truth and all of them were very angry, especially the, the brothers of, um, of Dinah from Rachel. So the action of Dinah, her, Dinah created a family crisis. So her actions of going to the place of Shikim created a family crisis. So they were having some arguments on what to do with, with Dinah. And then Dinah's brother decided to, to make an agreement with Hamor and Shikim. So when you read the succeeding story, they made the agreement that if, if and only if all the male of Shikim will be circumcised, then they will agree that Dinah will be married to Shikim. So, and they will not accept any dory or whatever as long as all of the males in Shikim will, will get circumcised. And that's their, that's their agreement. So if you are Shikim, that would be easy. And also they said that after all the men of Shikim will get circumcised, then they can make trade with each other, do business with each other. And even their daughters will marry the daughters of Shikim. And also they have, they're going to intermarry. That's their agreement. So it created a family crisis. So a single action of, of Daina created a family crisis. And if you read further, Shikim and Hamor agreed to be circumcised together with all the males of Shikim. But when the third day came, uh, all of the males in the city of Shikim were murdered by Simeon and Levi. And not only that, when other brothers heard about the murder of all the males in Shikim, they they plundered the city of Shikim and took away all the animals, all the valuable goods, and 
those uh, the 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 children and wives of those dead men were also taken and they were captured and uh, were uh, work as slaves for the family of Jacob. And Jacob, of course, as a father, did not did not um, consent to this. And the brothers Simeon and Levi took Dinah away from the house of Shechem. So this is this created the family crisis because you know um, Jacob is very few compared to the Canaanites there and Perizzites who is living around the places. The other the you know they are just a stranger in that land. So Jacob was troubled and he was very afraid of what will happen to them. So this are this is the story of Dinah. Her actions created a family crisis. So first, Dinah made the desire, the desire of going to city of Shechem with the girls there. And then that desire created also another desire, which when Shechem saw Dinah, she desired to have Dinah. And of course, there was action. And that action created to disaster the result is uh, very dangerous so young people who are listening it's very dangerous to uh, commit to your own desire to commit to your own uh, you know when you're just thinking about those things it's just okay but if you have that that desire already growing in your heart it will create and then you're going to do that that which resulted to action, there will be a disastrous result. So don't forget about the life of Dinah. So we're going to take some few life's lessons out of the story, which I'm going to share with you. I only have prepared four, but of course you can have more than that, more than four lessons out of the story of Dinah. So after Dina, those those two verses actually that I have shared with you a while ago, those are the only verses which mention the story of Dina, and Dina was never mentioned in the entire Bible after that. So that was only a short glimpse of who Dina is. So the first lesson that we learned out of the story is she befriended wrong people. So you notice that she went to with the seat, with the girls of Shechem. We don't know what kind of influence does those girls made to Dinah. That she went together with them without asking permission from his father Jacob. We don't, just don't know. I, I just assume that she did not ask permission from her parents because Jacob did not. Uh, was surprised that she was already being raped in the city of Shechem. You know, so she befriended wrong people. Young persons who are thrown into one another society may make their associations a blessing or a curse. They may edify, bless, and strengthen one another, improving in deportment, in disposition, in knowledge, or by be permitting themselves to become careless and unfaithful, they may exert only a demoralizing influence. So this is a the Dinah story is an example of um, choosing the right people to go with. You know, young people, you do not know what will happen if you go with that kind with with wrong people. It might be that you may influence them or they might they might be influencing you so as mentioned here it may be for a blessing or a curse good if it's a blessing but when it's a curse like what happened to Dina it will be a lot of problems so you should think about whom to associate with sometimes uh people associate us with our friends, Diba, you heard about the 
saying, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. That's exactly true because your friends will uh, say who you are. I remember my, the counsel of my mother when, she, when I was young. She told me that uh, don't associate yourself with, with uh, friends who do not like to study. If you want to be uh, wise and if you want to excel in class, associate with those students or pupils who are studios, who are talking about um, intelligent things because that will help you. Don't associate yourself with... But she said, I did not say that you're not going to, to make friends with them. Just make friends with those people, other students who are not really good in class. But you must associate all the time with those who are good in class. That's what her advice to me. And it's a really good advice. So for us parents, this is for us parents, you may aid them, your children, to develop characters that will not be swayed or influenced to do evil, but will sway and influence others to do right. By your fervent prayers of faith, you can move the arm that moves the world. This is Adventist Home, page 264. This is to us parents. We have this great responsibility to help our children develop their characters that, you know, they will not be easily swayed to do evil. I don't know what uh, happened to Dinah, how Leia, you know, actually, if you read the, the Bible, uh, Leia's children are the most problematic children of all the children of Jacob. Because Simeon there is one of her sons. And Simeon is very, very <laughs> uh, problematic one. You know, he's the one who incited the other brothers to sell Joseph to the Egyptians. He is the one who created a lot of problems for Jacob. And she is Re Leah's son. And I don't know how Leah guided her children. Why, why Leah and why uh, Simeon and Levi committed the great mistake of killing a lot of people. But you know, God is still good because even in spite of uh, Simeon, although Simeon never, if you, if you read the, the story after they reached the promised land, after they went out, the Hebrews went out to Egypt and went out from Egypt to the promised land. And then during the time of Joshua, Simeon uh, have forfeited the being part of the 12 tribes. He did not, um, later on, he did not um, inherit the, some of the, the land in, in the promised land because, uh, you know, many of the Simeon's descendants were eliminated in the wilderness because most of Simeon's descendants were part of those who rebelled against the Lord. But praise God, Levi is also his brother. Levi is part, was chosen by the Lord, although they also did not have part in the in Israel during the partition in the Promised Land of the lands in Israel, in the in the Promised Land. But Levi has a portion coming from the Lord. So Levi Levi was used by the Lord. So they, they, the, his descendants were called Levites. So these are the children of Leah. And they, most of them were really having a, a contributed a hard time to Jacob. So parents, we should aid our children in developing their characters to do right. It's really good if they are the ones uh, influencing their friends to do right. It's really, really good. And we parents are having this... Um, task to do. It's our fervent prayers of faith. I believe that uh, for me and my siblings, it's also one of the, uh, uh, we are one of the prayers answered by the Lord, prayer of my mother before she died for her children, because she left us behind when, especially me and my sister were still young. I believe God answered that.
prayer. Next lesson is she ventured to a wrong place. Oh, this is a uh, city of Shikim. When you say city, even if it's long time ago, it's a place of a lot of excitement. A place of uh, many, many things is, are, is happening. Me, I grew up in the city. It's really hard to be a Christian, especially a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. When you are in the city, even on Sabbath day, you heard a lot of music uh, around, especially when your neighbors wanted to make their sound system loud. And you, you can hear a lot of sound. You do not know what kind of music you're hearing already during the Sabbath day, but you can choose. You can choose what kind of music you wanted. But this person, this lady, Dina, went to a, a wrong place. So, education page 212, as ordinarily conducted, parties of pleasure also are a hindrance of real growth, either of mind or of character. Frivolous associations, habits of extravagance, of pleasure seeking, into often of dissipation are formed that shape the whole life for evil. In place of such amusements, parents and teachers can do much to supply diversions, wholesome and life giving. So, this is another challenge for us parents and also teachers that we need to uh, think of activities for our children, for our students, that will supply them wholesome activities that will divert their attention from worldly things. So because we know these worldly things are very, very attractive and it will really lead our young people to be there. It's really sad for me to see my students who were previously baptized members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here in CPAC. But when I see their social media account, when I see their posting, it really breaks my heart. Because I cannot see an Adventist Christian. You know, um, students, friends, let us be very careful in our posting in the social media. Because when you post there, people will not really, sometimes uh, they would say that, that, we are, that we are judging them. But no, people will see according to what you post in the social media. And they will see what kind of person you are. What, when you are posting, that's why also I'm, I'm telling my students to be careful in what they post because they might be saying a uh, wrong thing about themselves. So I am very sad to see some of them have already departed from, from what they know, from what they have learned while they were here in CPAC. But I believe God will make a way for them to go back again. Because, you know, as I've said, places like this is really associations of those kind of people is really, really uh, enticing. So we need to help them. In this age, life has become artificial and men have degenerated. It's really true. While we may not return fully to the simple habits of those early times, we may learn from them lessons that will make our sense seasons of recreation what the name implies, seasons of true upbuilding for body and mind and soul. Mahambakitanga, recreation. We are recreating what God had, had uh, done. Pero ang problem ko sa mga recreation, they are now on games, either social media games or, or actual games like mga chess, whatever. Manda, no, I'm, I'm not mentioning here things that will... Um, but if let's think of the it if it's uplifting the or upbuilding the body and the mind and soul to God, then that recreation is uh, is good. No, that's simple. Although uh, there are many things that will um, that will divert our minds to um, to other things. I am very thankful for some. Uh, some churches like the one I saw in the when I when I saw some Adventist mission clips in their website, I am so happy seeing Adventist churches having this 
um, center of influence in the city that will help also divert the attention of those people in the city life. That will help them also educate them on what are really good recreation, recreational activities. Okay. Third one, third lesson that we, that we can get out of Dinah's story is she stayed away from her family. So young people, don't go away from your family. And if ever there are times that, that uh, we'll be studying somewhere, always be in contact with your parents. Always, uh, always uh, ask permission from them even if you are away. It's really good to, that they know where you're going, even if you are away from them. So this is about Eve. Not, uh, you know the story of Eve that she, she went away from Adam before she was tempted by the serpent. But you know here, the angels had cautioned Eve to beware of separating herself from her husband while occupied in their daily labor in the garden. So, this is in the Patriarchs of Prophets. You see here, angels of God are always, even if you cannot see them, but I believe they are talking to us and telling us to our conscience that we should be careful from separating ourselves with our family, especially when we are together with our friends. It's very, very dangerous, just like what happened to Eve when she was alone. But our angels, our guardian angels are always telling us, cautioned us to be aware of separating ourselves from our family. But what happened to Eve? She was absorbed in her pleasing task that she unconsciously wandered from Adam's side. Sometimes, as I've said, those activities that we are doing sometimes swayed us away from our parents. It does not mean that we are out, I, I, it does not mean that we are physically away. Even if we are together with our parents, sometimes even if our parents are just beside us, we are already wandering away. What, how? With our social media undertaking. Sometimes uh, our parents did not know what we are doing with our cell phones, with our gadgets, with our computers. They don't know what is happening to us. We are wandering away. So on perceiving that she was alone, what, what Eve felt? She felt an apprehension of danger. But she dismissed that danger, that fears that she has, rather, deciding that she had sufficient wisdom and strength to discern evil and to withstand it. That is the problem with us. Sometimes we believe that we can do things on our own. And mindful of the angel's caution, she soon found herself gazing with mingled curiosity and admiration upon the forbidden tree. That is what happened to Eve and also to us as well. If you we will not be careful with what we are doing, we are already away, away from the truth, away from the good things. So be careful, especially young people and also of us adults. That we would not. Sometimes we are having some our own our own temptations as well, especially when we are opening our social media accounts. The mission of the home extends beyond its own members. The Christian home is to be an object lesson, illustrating the excellence of the true principles of life. Such an illustration will be a powerful power for good in the world. Far more powerful than any sermon that can be preached is the influence of a true home upon human hearts and lives. As the youth go out from such a home, the lessons they have learned are imparted. Nobler principles of life are introduced into the other households and an uplifting influence works in the community. I hope our children, when they go out, when they stay away from us, they will be influenced of good, not for evil. And that their, their, when I read the Adventist home, we parents have a great task to do. Either we are building armies for the Lord or armies for Satan. I hope that we would be building armies of God, that these children of ours would be a good influence to others. And the last one is, Dinah did not value her special identity. 
So in order that the work may go forward in all its branches, God calls for youthful vigor, zeal, and courage. He has chosen the youth to aid in the advancement of his cause, to plan with clear mind and execute with courageous hand demands fresh and crippled energies. Young men and women are invited to God to give God the strength of their youth, that through their exercise of their powers, through keen thought and vigorous action, they may bring glory to Him and salvation to their fellow men. So young people like Dinah, Dinah should be an example of, of uh, good to others. So when she have she went with the girls of, of city of Shikim, she should have influenced them to worship the God whom Dinah know, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, and the God of Abraham. But Dinah didn't do that. Instead of being an influence for good, she was an influence. She was being influenced by evil. So young people, you have the strength of your youth. Give that all your powers. Everything, your action, that will bring glory to Him and salvation to your fellow men. So this is an entreat for us. I entreat you to be wise and consider what will be the result of leading a wild life and controlled by the Spirit of God. Be not deceived, young people, or all of us. God is not mock. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. For your soul's sake, for Christ's sake, who gave himself to save you from ruin, post on the threshold of your life and weigh well your responsibilities, your opportunities, your possibilities. God has given you an opportunity to feel a high destiny. Your influence may tell for the truth of God. You may be a co-laborer with God in the great work of human redemption. So young people like Dinah, value your special identity. You have your special identity, your place in the work of God, because this is what our purpose, to fulfill God's mission in us, in blessing others. That's our mission. If you do not know, your young people, what is your purpose in life? God created you for that purpose. For what? to be co-laborers with Him, to finish the work together with the Lord. That's our purpose in life, none other else. That's why you have your special identity. You are very, very special. So these are the four life, life's lessons that we can learn out of Dinah's story. And I've summarized it here. She befriended wrong people. So we should choose the right people. Tell me who your friends are. And I will tell you who you are. She ventured to a wrong place. Don't forget to see where you are. Even if you are at the place here, does not refer to physical place only, but it also refers to even virtual places. She stayed away from her family. This one, this is spiritual, uh, actually away from her family, not, not just physical, uh, being away from her family. So don't forget, always ask permission to your parents. Always um, tell your parents where you are and always ask their guidance, their support. And the last one, she did not value her special identity. We, all of us, must, uh, must value our special identity. We are called by God for a special purpose. That is to finish her work and to be co-laborers with him. I hope that the simple story of Dinah will help us um, will help us evaluate ourselves and where we are and help us to be closer to him. This is just my prayer that we will always be closer to him, that, that our lives will be an example to others and that we will always think of our mission that is to spread the word of God and bless others. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the lessons that we have learned from the story of Dinah. May you help us, the parents, especially in uh, helping our children develop their characters, that they will not be swayed by others, 
and also help us parents to uh, design activities for our children that they will forget uh, to, and they will be happy, Lord, to be with us and to be able to fulfill their mission in us. And may also bless our young people as they are also uh, having many, many temptations in life. May you help them decide on what is good and what is best for them and help them, Lord, remember always that they are special persons called by you and equipped by you to do good works to others and bless others and fulfill your mission through them. May you use them mightily, use their young body, their young minds to be part of sharing uh, the, the gospel to others so that you will come sooner. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and giving us many opportunities to learn. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you very much for listening in, the, uh, the, uh, in our topic this morning. God bless your day.